Cube. At Big Data SV 2014 is brought to you by headline sponsors WAN Disco. We make Hadoop invincible. And Actian, accelerating Big Data 2.0. Hey, welcome back everyone. This is uh, SiliconANGLE and Wikibon's The Cube, our flagship program. We go out to the events, extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE. I'm joined by my co-host, Dave Vellante, co-founder of Wikibon.org. And we're here in Silicon Valley live in the heart of big data, Silicon Valley country, covering all the action, startups, uh, VCs, new, new big companies growing, and of course covering the Strata Conference right across the street. And uh, my next guest is Monty Zwiebin, a CEO of Splice Machine. Welcome to theCUBE. Thank you very much. So you guys, uh, hot startup, SQL on Hadoop, which has uh, been, been a hot topic now going back two years. You guys just announced, uh, just within the past 48 hours, $15 million of a Series B financing which is validation, you know, we, we were talking about that. Congratulations, and how do you feel? I feel great. Our company is now on its second stage of financing, growing significantly, and we think we have a wonderful position where, as everybody who is focused on SQL and Hadoop, they're, they're so focused on analytics and having a repository for data science, whereas Spice Machine is really looking to power real-time applications with real transactions, and so we feel being the only real-time transactional SQL on Hadoop database, we've got a unique position in the marketplace to take advantage of that new financing. So we've covered, you know, Hadapt two years ago got uh, fresh startup of the year. Dave, we've covered them. We remember we were at the st um, uh, Strata here and they won the, um, the startup competition. Some say you know, the ballots were stuffed a little bit, but well, you know, that's always the Twitter, the Twitter following. But, you know, that's like getting the, your, your, your picture on the cover of Sports Illustrated, isn't it? It's like the kiss <laughs> of death. <laughs> yeah, and they were the rising star. They won how to start up. But we don't, you know, what's your take? How do you guys differ from, say, Adapt? And again, we're going to start to see the bloom come off the roads. And a lot of these startups, you guys are clearly clearing the runway with a Series B. Mm -hmm. uh, you're a proven entrepreneur. You've been there before. Um, what do you guys do differently that the market needs? And, and how do you see the market? I think it's a great question because there's so much interest in, on SQL and Hadoop, and of course, Hadapt was one of the first organizations to do that, and we hear so many people getting into the space. But we're very different from all of the other players because most of these players have developed architectures for analytics only. And what that means is that they can't serve real-time applications. They can't change records on the fly. They can't do transactions. And if you're going to be a general purpose database that's going to power applications on the Hadoop infrastructure, you need all of the services that traditional databases have. Databases like MySQL, Postgres, Oracle, SQL Server. These are the general purpose databases that today are hitting the wall. And now people are looking for scale out solutions. And they can scale out on NoSQL but of course they give up on all the SQL services. Or they can scale out on the new SQL architectures that are out there that are unproven, proprietary architectures. Or they can scale out on Hadoop, which is proven technology to work at petabyte and beyond scale. And that's really what we're trying to bring people to, to power applications, real-time applications, and these other architectures are really about doing data science. So we had, uh, we had Kurt Monash on theCUBE last summer, mm -hmm. John, at the Vertica User Conference, and I don't argue with Kurt Monash about <laughs> database stuff anyway, because it's just what you'll, I mean, you, No matter if you're right, you'll still What's lose. the point, <laughs> right, he'll still bury me. But, so, but I did ask him, you know, what percent, and you sort of your, your, your discourse just then reminded me, what percent of the, uh, uh, of, of the sort of new applications really need, now you didn't say acid properties, I'm, I'm at, first question, is that what you're talking about, I'm some talking of those about acid properties? I'm what percent of these acid. new apps really need those acid properties? And, and I wonder if you could comment on that, and then yeah, I'll share with you what Kurt said. I love that, I spoke to Kurt last week as well, and, and he's a fantastic character, and we're having a great dialogue. I think we're going to be um, really um, having a, an ongoing communication, because he really gets this space, to your point. Um, but yes, Splice Machine is fully acid. And the question is, what use cases is that good for? Many people think that acid properties are just for traditional transactional types of operational applications. These are the applications that people think of that may be powering a website or doing financial transactions, e-commerce, and things like that. But really, really, transactions are required even for OLAP. 
if you want to update secondary indexes in a SQL database at the same time as the data and keep that consistent, you need a transactional context. That requires asset properties. That requires a traditional architecture that allows you to keep those atomic, consistent, and isolated transactions um, in the database. And that's precisely what we're seeing out there. So even if you're doing a large-scale reporting application or an analytics application, you actually do need transactions. You need asset properties. And that's why we built what we built. Yeah, so one of our other cube alums, John, uh, I was going on Twitter with uh, Ray Wang the other day, and we, we've actually forecast the sort of SQL and, and no SQL spaces, and there's a lot of growth in SQL, mm -hmm. you know, and I think it's been a, this, the Hadoop has been a tailwind for SQL. And I, so I think so, and I think that people still to this day think of Hadoop more as a static data repository, something that you do data science on. They, they don't think of it as real-time yet, even though HBase has been around for quite some time and powers many different real-time applications. But um, today, I think we'll start to see real-time SQL-based applications powered by systems like Splice Machine. Well, and you get, we, we get the discussions all the time with some of the early Hadoop you know, practitioners like Stefan Groshup from uh, Datamere said that's not what Hadoop was designed for. You know, <laughs> what are you talking about, Monty? But well, so I, I, I what just beg to differ. What I gives you confidence that you're uh, you're going to sort of break that mold? Well, I, what gives me confidence is what our customers are doing. We have one customer who's got this uh, tremendous direct marketing service that they're providing for retailers, large-scale retailers out there, and they have implemented an off-the-shelf campaign management software package that's powered by Oracle. It happens to be a campaign management application that's um, sold by IBM, and it's powered by Oracle. They hit the wall, and they said to us, listen, we, we really need to scale out to make our business more profitable and to grow the way we want to grow, and we're thinking about replacing the Oracle piece of this. Can you do it? And so they gave us a bunch of queries to test that had been giving them problems, and we just blew it out of the water. We just were performing better on much less expensive hardware. And then we connected it up with their Cogno systems and their Ab Initio systems, which were uh, essentially used as their ecosystem for data, and everything worked fine. And now we're integrated doing full end-to-end -end campaigns on their campaign management system, proving out that Hadoop can power a real-time application. So that's an example for Monty, you. Monty, what was the catalyst for that uh, example? We're talking about replacing Oracle. Was it, was it just the sort of Oracle squeezing them on license costs? Was it the, the business outcome that they were desiring? They knew they couldn't get it with Oracle? I wonder if we could talk about that a little bit. I think that, uh, I don't know the details too much about you know, why they turned to us, but I do know a few of those pain points. Number one, they were having some performance problems in the Oracle architecture they were using today and they were looking on expanding. I suspect Oracle was probably looking for scale up to Exadata or perhaps in other ways scaling out, but uh, I know that they were looking at how they would stay on Oracle and still serve their issues, and that was quite expensive. So it's a combination of this price performance issue that they're really trying to get at, and I see that across the board in many of the companies we talk to. They hit the wall with their existing database. They're looking to find some solution, they need to scale out, and they really didn't know they can scale out on Hadoop yet. And with us coming in and educating that Hadoop is real time, we're, we're, we're seeing some traction. Uh, let's talk about a little bit more about uh, of Splice Machine, the company, where you're at with you know, your funding and you know, your headcount and things like that, all the yeah, it's key a, metrics there. It's a fun day for us because it's a day after our Series B financing, as you mentioned earlier. So we <laughs> raised uh, $15 million uh, from two great venture capital partners, our original um, investors, more David Dow Ventures, as well as InterWest Partners. Um, we are excited to take the company to the next stage. We're about 30 people. We're in private beta. So we're a young company still uh, having a number of about 15 companies testing our system at scale with their use cases like the one I mentioned earlier. And um, we'll be in public beta sometime very soon. I look forward to reaching out to you guys to announce that. But we'll put our, at our platform out on our website for anyone to try, download, and even use at small scale. So you'll see that public beta coming real soon. What are some of the success points that you're looking for out of the public beta? Public beta is obviously pretty important. We, you know, we have our startup at our crowd chat, which is actually public 
preview beta one, um, one testing at scale. What does that mean, scale? And, and what are some of the economics involved? Okay, not, you don't have to give us the exact numbers, but kind of order of magnitude, how big a scale are you talking about both technically and then on the outcome side, from the business model standpoint, what does that render into? I mean, obviously $15 million financing, you got to show some traction. So, so just give us a little taste. Sure, sure. So <laughs> um, some metrics of success for me. Uh, I'd like to go into 2015 with thousands of nodes uh, deployed uh, out there. I'd like to um, see, um, you know, I would say, n you know, south of $5 million of, of contracting activity for a first um, first year of a, of a startup company having uh, a generally available product. So, you know, anything north of that would be an impossible task, I, I think. But I, I am very excited about reaching those objectives. I think that the interest levels that we're getting in conferences like this here at Strata, as well as just on our website, without even having our generally available product, tells me that this is a market that's quite hot out there. And with respect to the scale of the kinds of problems that people are trying to solve, I, I would say they're always greater than terabytes, obviously, because otherwise traditional database technology would serve them well. Um, but tens of terabytes and hundreds of terabytes are the sweet spot, I think, of this marketplace. And then there are a few players out there that have petabytes of, of problems. The tests that are being done uh, by our charter customers, the beta customers I talked about, are, are the kinds of things where 20 billion or 100 billion rows are being joined against a similar size table. So we're talking very significant size um, that would overwhelm traditional technologies. Um, and it's um, remarkable at how easy it is for companies to actually generate that kind of data and make use of it today. That's fantastic, and um, total finance that you guys raised, A and B total, what does that come it up to? It was $15 million in this round and $4 million in the first round. And I'm not a fan of raising humongous amounts of money. I think that can take startup teams and defocus them if they have too much money. I think you should raise exactly what you need, and that's what we need. Great, and obviously the first round, it's not that a lot of, amount of cash for that, given the scale you are, but great validation. Again, this is a market of validation right now. We're seeing this in the big data. Monty, thanks for joining on theCUBE. I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante. This is Big Data SV, where we're covering all the action, entrepreneurs, investors, big companies, big moves here in Silicon Valley, covering all the news at the Strata Conference, all the tech athletes. This is theCUBE, we'll be right back with our next guest. <laughs>